is a strange look for my shop as many of you comment how messy the work table is when I'm doing various things and that's just the nature of the bill. I'm very envious of those of you who keep your shop meticulously clean. I am incapable of doing that. Um, but what I do do is once I complete a task, I not only clean the workbench, but I clean the entire shop. And that's really the only way I've been able to, to get on top of, of the mess that is the very nature of building a model boot. Okay, today we're going to look at a modification I made recently to the bandsaw that I mounted on the Mac Pro uh, base. And this is it here. And the modification is the installation of a light um, right on top of the saw. Um, it's wired in the back um, directly into the switch. Um, so that whenever I put it on, the light simple but effective for us poor people who are having trouble seeing these days. And here's another little tip. Um, we're always mixing glue on the model and I'm always looking for something maybe to put PVA, sometimes to put the CA in. And these little lids, this came from a disposable uh, mustard and ketchup um, bottle from a fast food chain. I'm not sure what type of plastic it is, but the long and short of it is the glue doesn't stick to it. So it's really very easy to clean it up. And I've been able to use this over and over again. Eventually, it does start to stick to it. I suppose it gets scratches and starts to hold on. I just change it with another one. But it's a great little tool to keep in your workshop. Now we're going to start with the essence of this video, and that is planking out the first of the strakes. So you may find that it's very repetitive and very boring. I'm not going to have a lot of dialogue. I will find some nice music and just play through and speed it up to show you what I'm doing uh, to the completion of the, of the first band. So let's get started. <laughs> you put on um, should be the easiest um, strike in the, in the group. So I made a mistake on the starboard side and I'm not going to repeat that on the port side. So you can see I put the bow piece in and next I'm going to put the stern piece in and then fill in the middle pieces. forward we're bending two strikes at the same time so 
that should speed up things considerably. You'll also notice that the bend has become much easier at the back and so I think this really is what gave us most of the problems and I'm quite sure it'll go much faster now. quick note about stock um, because we are spiling off the planks that is we are cutting the the shape into the planks not bending them you're going to use a lot of a lot of wood I tend to I just randomly picked that the width of the planks I've prepared um, should be around three to four feet wide um, and perhaps just a little bit thicker than the three inches because um, you're going to be sanding them down and you're not going to get the the strakes to flip to fit flat on the on the frame every time so it's nice to have a little room if you cut them as we do with um, planks that are 12 inches or 10 inches wide and we make up the stock like this 
um, you're, you're going to quickly run into problems. So you can decide how wide you want to make the plank because you're going to waste some wood. Um, but my suggestion is a minimum of three and probably not more than four feet wide. Um, in the case, I've actually almost completed the difficult part, the first um, band of streaks, and uh, we've gone through um, nine of these wider planks because uh, the wastage is fairly high. out um, some of my errors <laughs> which I'm very good at showing you so let's just take a look at it we'll zoom in here and you take a look at the line that we established no matter how hard I tried um, to keep these streaks to the exact measurement that I've taken um, which is you take the space divided by the number of streaks and you come up with the exact measurement of different parts on this installation. Um, it, there's a creeping error of um, probably a quarter of an inch or half an inch of each piece until eventually we reach the area where clearly this is really too tight. So I need to move this band back a little bit on both sides. Um, so that I get relatively balanced thickness across the length of the streak. Um, and that's not an issue. Remember, all we're looking for is a nice clean line, a line that is pleasing to the eye. So we'll move this probably up, I would think not more than two or three inches, uh, relay this line, draw it on the model, and then recut the parts um, to fit out. This part here is the deepest part and it should be around, um, it should be around 12, 13 inches. It's about 10 and a half inches. And this one is correct, this is a 12. So again, it just means we're just a few inches out, maybe an inch and a half out here. And that'll go all the way along and so we'll just re-establish this line. I am very unhappy about how this came in. This is the last piece in this trick. And um, this V, I'm very uncomfortable with it. So I've decided that I'm going to, I've drawn a line along here and I'm going to flatten this out so I get again a nice clean line um, coming from three quarters way up to the bow. Um, I could have also changed this piece and made this fatter um, and I could have also put a steeler in here but I want to come back and be true to the form so this is the piece I'm going to cut out. And I'm going to do this with the Japanese saw.
went without any great surprises. A few little challenges along the way, um, but nothing unsurmountable. And if you look at the lines, um, nice clean symmetry. Not exactly as the plan that um, David and Greg laid out. Um, but again, as I said, that plan was not written in stone. So now we're going to go and change tack a bit. And we're going to come back to the bottom of the boat and fill the last band in. And then once that's done, we can tackle either side. Um, so we'll see you in the next video. And remember, keep on laying.